I'm so glad that you got to go to Greensboro, North Carolina, so you know where I'm from now. That's not my home. Thank you for that. When I say Greensboro, somebody needs to relate to that. Amen. Stephen Woodson. Well, uh, yesterday I attended a home going with one of my great cousins. Uh, yesterday her name was Lafayette Field. Uh, I consider that a celebration because, you know, she believes, she believes believe her. Man, she's at home right now. And just keep, keep me in prayer, y'all, because I mean, every time I go to visit my family, like I said, I, have, I look at it like it's an ancient relation, family, like, you know, it's down many years in so many parts, you know, the Indian part side of my, on my father's side. And uh, this is something I really focus on. Amen. 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 Well, we know to leave right here. 
as it was in the Lord. We know that she's in a better place. The Lord says to rejoice. Amen. So we shall rejoice when our saints have made it that final milestone. Okay, is there anyone else that I've overlooked? Okay, at this time we will have our celebration song. Participated earlier this week with the Dallas Regional District Association when they came to us. Third uh, Avenue, you showed up in good number and you were a gracious host. And I'm thankful to be your pastor to say that all that were here and in attendance was blessed Amen. by your presence and by uh, being a, a service to them. Amen. Um, also, I want to say that uh, I guess I'll go ahead and say it this way. Uh, I've been asked as pastor to kind of make the plea because some of our servers that serve the, the food have requested request, requested that we find so start looking for someone to give aid and maybe take the position of one of the server that serves when we host other churches. I, I don't normally do it this way, but I guess. I don't have much to talk about, so I might as well just go and put that out there now. I usually just try to find somebody and put them in that position. But I'm making the plea because I see some of our youth here today and some of our young adults here today. And I want you to know that sometimes the saints' uh, steps get a little shorter and the eyes get a little dimmer. And then they need someone to carry them just the way that they have been carrying you. So we know now that it's your time to step up. And that's something similar to what I'll be preaching about today because I will be preaching from what we heard in um, Dallas Regional on Thursday of, in the book of Joshua. We noticed that the children were getting ready to cross the Jordan and go in into the land of Canaan. And we know that those that were older did not make it to the land of Canaan, but another generation of Israelites did make it in. And that is because we are standing on the shoulders of others of who have gone the journey before us. So since you're standing on their shoulders, you ought to serve the same God and you ought to provide the same service that was once rendered to you. Amen. 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 As the preacher say, should have got a little more amen from the younger generation. Amen. Amen. In other words, the light is shining on you now. So stand firm and stand strong and hold up the same God of your ancestors amen. and serve him and serve him with joy and with gladness. Amen. And again, I want to thank those teachers that were here. I want to thank those instructors and those that came out and gave great messages and great encouragement to our youth. I'm looking at uh, Brother Montgomery, who was a great uh, teacher and shared with the young adults and Sister Huckleby and so, so many others. But I want you to know, Steve, I'm praying for you because I know what your journey has been because you shared with me on yesterday that after he had to leave, he had to make a trip to Oklahoma and he said he would be back. And he's back, y'all. Amen. 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 So I know sometimes we get weary, but be.
be not weary in well-doing. We will reap if we faint not. Amen. Uh, and to many of you, for many others, I know that your load is heavy, but just come to the church house and cast your cares on him. And God cares for you, and he'll give you strength to provide everything you need. Um, I also have uh, one other thing that I have to do, and I have not figured out how I am going to do it at this time. Um, we have business owners here in the church, and on yesterday, I believe one business owner, which would, would uh, be my grandbaby's mother, she gave a gift away of some of the products that she produces. She, she has, that's why I'm shining up here. She makes this all and it's real good. I like it. And a bunch of other things, lip gloss and all of that. And she gifted it to someone yesterday. And we also have, Kiki, is she here? Uh, she has a gift that she's going to, she wants to give away. And I think it's $150 worth of uh, hair stuff. Now, my, I kind of felt bad because you all not to be talking about hair. I should have talked about hair, but it's for a service for you to get your hair done. And I said, well, I still think it's kind of unfair because that seems like something for women. But my wife let me know that it's men running around here with dreads and braids and all that kind of stuff too. So it is, I guess you would say it is a unisex gift. Amen. But since I don't have dreads and braids, not unisex. So if I win, I've got to give mine away because there ain't nothing I can do with it. So, but anyway, I, they told me to give you guys a question and the person who can answer the question wins the gift. So since I can't participate, there's no need for me to participate. I'm gonna make this question extremely hard. <laughs> but no, but I'm going back to my seat and I'll be praying because I don't really know what to ask right now. So I'm gonna go and pray about the question that I need to ask. So y'all get ready. I guess I will make it at least a Bible question. So let's get ready for that and, uh, and we wanna give that gift away. But I thank God for our business owners and those who have stepped out in entrepreneurship and said that if I can't find a job, I'll create a job. And, and trusting God to make the make the vision plain and make it clear and make the business profitable and, and um, successful. So we thank God for, for all of our the youth and those who are educating themselves and stepping out on faith and believing God so that they can be all that they can be. Uh, I have a very interesting subject for our message on today. Don't get your pens out because I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> all I'm going to say is I will be preaching from the book of Joshua today, chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, which is the same scripture that uh, my pastor, Pastor Michael Pryor, expounded on at the Dallas Regional on Thursday, and Reverend Benden Dykes preached from the same text after him, and it was such an amazing message. Amen. They talked about a land that we have not traveled before, yeah. and I'm going to share some things. How do we travel through a land from a place that we have not been before? So that's not the subject, but that's what we will be concentrating on. How do you get through this land? And it's in a place where you've never been before. Nobody can really help you because your forefathers didn't make it through, but you're still traveling that road. So how do you make it through? So I'll share that with you, and I'm going back to my seat so we can move higher into the service. And let's just thank God for how good he has been to us. Let's thank God that he has never failed us, he has not changed, and he has been an ever-present help in the time of trouble and in a time of struggle. God bless you, Lord. song and they have asked me to leave it out and you're pretty sure you, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with it so 
just come on and sing along with me. There's a lily in the valley, bright as the morning star.
this time we will have our brother in Christ, Brother Evans, will lead us out with our, uh, oh, it's going to be Brother Lee. Uh, brother Lee didn't part to Brother Evans. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Brother. <laughs> Come on down, Brother Lee. And for those that are, again, a part of the school district, whether you be from the smallest position to the largest position, uh, teachers or students even security, at this time, I believe they're asking y'all is to come on down. Amen. Am I right? Is that what they're saying? Amen. Amen. Yeah, come on down to the altar. Amen. 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 Any person that's an educator, come on down. Amen. 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 And while y'all doing that, I want to say congratulations to my wife. Amen. I failed to think about it and it just dawned on me. Congratulations, Sister Rose, for being elected again for the Library School Board. Amen. 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 Yes. I just want to, since you put that out there, I just wanted to say that we have two granddaughters. One started Monday first grade teacher, and the other one started Monday as a fifth grade teacher. So Amen. 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 Yeah. Let's keep all them in our work. the 
wearing it there about the year. So I ask that we not just hear it, but do it, Lord. And also try to use it in our everyday lives. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.
that you considered us. Thank you, Father, that you have shown your love towards us. And while we were your enemies, the Messiah died for us and said that I see something in them that they cannot see in themselves. Father, I thank you for an eye to see something that no man can see. For your word it says that they have eyes but they can't see. They have ears and they cannot hear. But Father, you are an all-seeing God. And you see the end of the journey for us. And you know that it's good pleasure and it is your will. And Father, thank you again for including us in it. And Father, I can feel your spirit now. It's something about when we get a chance to talk to you and talk with you. Lord, when the spirit catches us, we can do it all day long. But I know that I have an assignment now that I must give your word. So Father, bring me clarity of mind, conviction of heart, and wisdom beyond understanding of man. And Father, let your word come forth and let you be glorified and let you be magnified. And I want to lift you up and exalt you above everything and anything else. And Father, it's in your son Jesus' name I pray. And all of God's children say it together. Amen. And I can understand your perspective. I don't agree with you. Yes, sir. But I can understand. And I know why. And it's because you don't know him. Amen. Because if you know him, you may not understand him, but you will know that he is a miraculous wonder. Yes, he is a thought that really no man can conceive. You cannot define him. So you definitely will never be able to explain him. But yet and still, you know he's God. And can't nobody. Do me like Jesus. I'm going to preach today. I ain't going to get off in the testimony. But again, I'm glad I know him. And most of all, I'm glad that he knows me. Joshua chapter 3. Joshua chapter 3, beginning in verse 1, says, Then Joshua rose early in the morning and set out from Shittim and came to the Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they crossed over. So it was after three days that the officers went through the camp and they commanded the people saying, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites bearing it, then you shall set out from your pla uh, from your place and go after it. Yes, Yet there shall be a space between you and it, and about two thousand cubits by measure. Do not come near it, that you may that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way 
before. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. For a subject I want to preach to you today. How to get out of Shittim. Mm -hmm. All right. How to get out of Shittim. All right. I know what it said. I want to make sure that uh, Dick in English, you put the right word up there. <laughs> 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 Don't I just say it this way? Don't forget the T I M goes on. M. And I want you to ask you the question Do you know how to get out of the shit that you're in? And look at this word here. If you think it's borderline, you ought to look at the other pronunciation of it. Mm. It's not a T-I-M, T-A-M, T-I-M at the end of it, but it's a T-A-H. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I thought it would be fitting if I just stick with the T-I-M yeah. before I ask you how to get out of the T-A-H yeah. Yeah. for the other pronunciation. But I know that some of us are kernel minded and some of us are spiritual minded. Yes, sir. All right, all right. And when we look at this word, I know what comes to your kernel mind. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you something. The children of Israel were in this place. And even though they didn't look at it from a kernel position, we're not looking at it from a kernel position. We find that Israel was in a kernel position. Yes. They're in this land of Shittim. They, they were lodged in an acacia grove. Being there in an acacia grove, the Bible says that they sat there for three days. And then they, it came to them that it was time to get up and move. And this really isn't the first time that they found themselves in this place. Huh? called Shittim. They had been there on a number of occasions. Amen. But before I go that deep into it, let me tell you about this place. Mm -hmm. This place was right before the Jordan River. They were at the place up to the Jordan River because it's now, now time for them to cross over to the other side. Mm -hmm. Joshua leading them. And it's time for them to get ready to enter into the land of Canaan. It's time now getting ready to enter into the promised land. And how many of you know that you're right on the Jordan River and you're heading in the direction and you're about ready to enter into the promised land that God has for you. Amen. But before you get there, you got three days which is a time of completion also in a land of Shittim. You're in a place now just like the children of Israel. The children of Israel, let's look at it. It said that they were in this land of Shittim, but they also were in the Acacia Grove. Yes, this place, the Acacia Grove, was somewhat similar to an orchard. But really, it was a grove of trees called the acacia tree. And they were lodged there under the acacia trees. And let's look at the acacia trees and the value of the acacia tree. The acacia tree was a tree that was good sometimes for, to eat from. It was a tree sometimes used for its wood. The wood was so valuable from the acacia tree that sometimes it was offered up as offerings. Even when others offered silver and gold, the acacia tree was just as valuable because of the sturdiness and the sternness of the wood. It was used for building great places. I believe they were even used in building in the Temple of Solomon. And I believe it said that they had cedars and acacia wood that helped build the kingdom of Solomon, Solomon's kingdom. And the trees of the acacia were so large 
that no man has ever seen trees that large in his lifetime. And God used some acacia wood. But then also he used the same wood to build the Ark of the Covenant, which we're looking at now. And the Ark of the Covenant being constructed with acacia wood and then covered with gold, showing that the Ark of the Covenant was strong and sturdy, and it also had great value. Amen. And it covered the three things that God had placed in the Ark of the Covenant, which was the pot, golden pot of manna, Aaron's rod that budded. And then there was one other in the pot in the in the ark. Can anybody tell me what was it else was in the in there? There it is, the Ten Commandments, the law of God. It was all covered in the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark of the Covenant was a symbol of God's presence yes, and a symbol of God's power. Yes, and it was made from the acacia wood that came from the valley of Shittim. Yeah. And now this tree that grows in the valley, it was also used for medicinal purposes. The medicinal purpose, purposes, it helped you with those that had toothache and pains in their mouth. It was for oral work and medication. It was also one that heals. It was also used as a pain reliever. This was a mighty good tree to be around. This tree was in the valley of Shittim, a bad place, but a provision was put there. For God's children Amen. to dwell under. Amen. It was a place that it healed the body. It fed the body. It also provided for the body. Because you could sit under the tree of acacia and get the sun off the top of your head. You could hang around under the tree when it was raining and keep yourself from getting wet and cold and sickly. This tree looks mighty good, but I'm just not crazy about the place. This place was a place called Shittim. And when we look at this place, and I say that it's good provision there, but it's not a good place for you to dwell and hang. It's not a place, Reverend Rowan, that we all call home. Because I tell you all the time, whether you know it or not, you're living now. Not just in Dallas, Texas. You're not living just in the state of Texas or maybe the state of Louisiana or anywhere else. Whether you know it or not, you're in a land called Shittim. All right. All right. Because these children of Israel could not call this place home. This was a wilderness place. This was a place that was not fit for the king's children. This world is not our home. This world is a place called Shittim. But how do you make it through Shittim when you don't know where you're traveling to? I know how we're going to get through it. And I know who's going to bring us through it. That's why I'm smiling now because I really want to shout. Because again, we're in this place, and it looked good because of the grove, the acacia grove that was there. But when I think about this place, well, I'm so quickly reminded of what took place in this place. And I'm learning why we all not to get comfortable, because it talked about the acacia trees that was good for building. But notice the text never teaches us to build a home. Never tells us to. It tells us that we lodge there for three days. It means that it's a temporary stay. It means that I won't be here forever. Amen. Because this is not the place that I'm going to call my final resting place. Because I know that when he calls by name, I'm going to rest in the arms of God. We're going to rest in a home that's not built by man's hand. Yes. 
We're going to rest in a place, not a place that's built with acacia wood. All right. But we're going to rest in a place that was actually built on dog wood. Right. See, I've been studying my woods. Reverend Rose. We're going to be living in a place that actually was built by dog wood yeah. and three nails. Can I tell you what I know? There was a city bright and fair that's prepared for a prepared people. And I know a man that went up on a hill called Calvary. And he drug a dogwood tree up on a hill called Calvary. Some call it a cross. Some call it the wood. Some call it a stake. And all remains true. But it was a stake made out of dogwood. And on a dogwood tree, they took two nails and they stretched him wide. Yes, they took one nail and riveted him his feet. Yes. And don't you know that that was a carpenter's son? Yeah. Yes. But that was an architect's baby? Yes. See, because Joseph was a carpenter. Uh -huh. That was his earthly father. Right. But his father truly was God up in heaven. Amen. And he's the great architect. Yes, Can I tell you how good he is? Good he, is. he was so good that he spoke this world into oh, existence. Yes, Didn't need a hammer, saw, yes, or protract. Yes, but he was able to stretch the seas around the earth. Yes, he was able to put the waters on the ground. Oh, and it's not sink and, and come up to dry land. Yes. And he was able to speak stars into the sky. Man's trying to figure out through scientific effort. But God says, I'm greater than any science you'll ever come up with. I'm the great architect. I'm the one who holds it all in the palm of my hand. But you know why I'm rejoicing about it? Because not only does he hold the orbits in his hand, not only does he speak and know every fish that's in the sea, he calls me by his name. And when he calls me by my name, can I tell you what I really love about him? He always ends up saying, my child, one in whom thou I love. He said, I know where I have you. Now, don't worry about this place called Shittim because I've got another place for you. I've got a home. Oh, I didn't mean to go there right now, but I just can't hold it. The longer I live, the more I love it. Because the more I live, the more I learn that he's the giver of life. And I'm thankful for what he's done for me. And I'm thankful now that even though I'm in Shittim, he's put me under the arch of the Acacia Grove. And then I told you this place really wasn't a pleasant place. And look what happens to us if you look over into the book of Numbers, I believe, and start looking at what the children of Israel did in the land of Shittim. All right. And I've got to warn you something. Yes, Pay close attention to me when I tell you. Just because God has provisions for you in the land of Shittim, don't get it twisted into believing that you're going to always be obedient to it. So because he provides for you, don't ever get comfortable. Let me break this down to you. I believe it's over in the book of uh, uh, Numbers, I believe. But when you look at it, I think it's around 25 or something of that nature. But when you look at the children of Israel, when they're in this land of Shittim, even though the tree of acacia was there and the acacia groves was there, it was somebody else there too. All right. All right. <clears throat> See, this time they were only there for three days. Yes, sir. But there were other times that they hung out there. Mm -hmm. And I told you, don't worry about it because sometimes we have a tendency to get comfortable. Mm -hmm. And look what happened. When you look at it over in that book, you'll find out that while they were there, they started to entertain the others. The others were the Moabites. And the Bible will tell you that the children of Israel said while they lodged and stayed in this place called Shittim, they began to have sex and have relationship with the Moabites. Now I'm beginning to understand why they call it Shittim. 
Because they started serving and, and laying with the women of the Moabites. And once they started doing that, they also started to, uh, uh, they started to worship their gods. And when they started worshiping their God, they started to worship Baal Peor. And now they have a relationship with Baal Peor. I told you, it, even though there was an acacia grove there, it does not ex excuse the fact that sometimes when we hang in a place long enough, we end up letting it rub off. Amen. You know the saying, don't you? If you lay down with dogs, you're going to get up with fleas. Amen. And I always said like this, be careful of the company you keep. Amen. Because sometimes it'll soon rub off on you. Amen. You hang around with trouble. Trouble is really going to hang out with Amen. you. Amen. And before you know it, it'll have you hung up. So now the children of Israel have seen that in this place called Shittim, yes, sir. now we have gone and started to have, uh, have relations with the Moabites and begin to serve their God. Yes. And the Moabites' God was like many of the gods that I've shared with you. The Moabites' God, they were off into all kinds of sexual idolatry. Yes. They had this thing to where they would, would, would have, yes, they would have orgies and they would sacrifice babies and they would, have, they would off into pedophilia and all kinds of gruesome acts that was detrimental to the life of mankind. Yeah. And this is what the people got themselves caught up in. Can I share with you today, I say, how do we get out of Shittim? Mm -hmm. And I told you Shittim is just not a foreign land, but it is a place where you live now. Right. Have you taken a look at the place where you live now? Right. Have you turned on your television lately? Yes. Have you taken a look at social media yes. lately? Yes. Have you taken a look at, I, I bad to say it, but have you taken a look at some of the lives of these people that you call adults now? Amen. Amen. This land is full of all types of sexual addictions. Yes, there are many that won't step into the church house. And I'm going to relate this to the text. There are many that won't step into the church house and profess that they know God. But they're caught up in all kinds of illicit sexual acts. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it is overtaking. Now you have LGBTQ. You have all types of, of, of stuff that's on TV that sometimes you can't even stomach yourself to yes. watch it. But don't, don't look at the TV. So don't get tough on the actors on TV because some of us are doing it in reality. And it's here now. And look at some of the things that we're doing now. I'm going to get in your business a little bit. I told you they get off into pedophilia and they get off into all kinds of sodomy and all kinds of stuff like that. And, and I, I dare not ask you to raise your hand, but how many of us now have the, we've been going to that shop. You know they call it the toy shop. And you're getting these toys. And now you don't need a spouse. Now you don't need a relationship with anybody else. You got your jackrabbit and your pocket rabbit and all that now. I might as well go and say it. If the Bible can call it shittim, I can tell you what shittim looks like. You got all of that now. And really, you looking at it as, as some kind of sex toy or an object, but really it's sodomy. Yes. And you're doing all this stuff and you're defiling yourself. And But you are quick to say that I know God. And I ain't going to argue with you. I believe you do know God. You just don't know this God. Because now you caught up because you don't want to be around those that know this God. You don't want to worship with those who worship this God. Yeah. But you say you know God. And I believe you know God. But you know the God of the Moabites. Yeah. You know the one that will have you off into illicit acts. Yeah. You know the one that will have you doing things that are unseemingly with your body. You, are the one, you know the God that says that it's all right for man to marry man and woman to marry woman. It's all right for us to put this stuff out here in front of our children. And 
and let our children make their own decision of their own sexual orientation. And then when Ray Ray come up in here with green hair and long locks, now you're wondering what's wrong with it. Well, you said let him make his own choice, but how can you let somebody make their own choice and own decision about life and they don't know anything about life? And how can you sit here and say it is up to them to make their own decision when the Bible itself says that you ought to train up a child in the way that it should go? The Bible tells you to spare not the rod and spoil the child. But the Bible here tells us that there is a way that seemeth right to a man. But the end therein is death. And now you see them, now they're depressed and now they're chaotic. But you let them have everything that you thought they wanted. You let them make any decision they want. You let them say, make your own decision. You, God made you and gave you a mind. Do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. And now you let them do it. And now at the age of five and six, they run around saying, I want to kill myself. Don't want to live no more. Don't care nothing about life and haven't even experienced. Life. How can you be troubled with life and you ain't paid a bill yet? How can you be upset with life and you haven't even bought a car yet? How can you be upset with life and you don't know what it is to be unemployed and underemployed? You don't even know the troubles of this world yet, but yet still it ain't worth living no more. Well, you haven't lived it yet anyway. You've been serving a more by God. Yes. You're in this land. Good preaching, Good preaching. You got people around you who tell you how things ought to go. And you know what really got me in this text? What got me in the text that this was the children of Israel who left God for the Moabite God. And he had provided the acacia grove right there before their very eyes. I'm going to teach you how to get out of there. What got me was, how can you sit in a place where God has provided for you? Time and time again, acacia tree. He's provided for you a roof over your head. They call it shelter. Yeah. He's gotten you out of the dangerous weather. Yeah. He's getting, he's provided healing for you. That's what the tree did. Yeah. Where you think it came from? Yeah. Why do you think God lodged them up under the yeah. in the acacia yeah. grove? In the middle of God's provision, yeah. Yeah. they walked out to the Moabites. Yeah. Got a surgery for you that would heal your mouth. Got a plant for you that'll get rid of your toothache and your headache so that you can talk right and you can learn and listen. And I put you in a grove of trees. You ain't got to worry about the leaves ever running out. Yeah. I put you in a grove, a casey of grove, so you can walk a little further and still be in the midst of my provisions in a land that ain't your home. And I'm going to teach you how to get out of there. How did you get out of Shittim? Well, the Bible says to us now in these texts, when we start moving on to 2 and 3 and 4, we'll see where the Bible says that now after three days of lodging there, when you see the ark of God, which is the ark of the covenant, when you see it, you're going to see the Levites carrying it. Don't take your eyes off of the ark. Don't get too close to it, but don't take your eyes off of it and follow it. Amen. Let me show you where we're going. They were following the ark of God, which was the presence of God and the power of God. It was made from the acacia wood covered in gold, so they had to know what the Ark of the Covenant was all about because it was fashioned from the mind of God but by the hands of man. So they were very well aware of what it was all about. 
the Ark of the Covenant had taken them into battle and brought them through. The Ark of the Covenant had dwelled with them and blessings had flowed bountifully with them. The Ark of the Covenant had been taken from them when they lost them in battle and they saw the struggles that they had as, as long as the presence of God was with them. You do know the Philistines defeated them and took the Ark of the Covenant at one time because God said to them, I'm going to give you into the hands of the Philistines and they're going to capture the Ark of the Covenant. And as long as the Ark of the Covenant was not with the people, the people suffered and struggled. See, they suck struggling now when the Ark of God is with them. Can you imagine what it looked like? Yeah. Without the Ark of the Covenant. But now God has restored them and brought the Ark of the Covenant back to them. And when he brings it back to them now, he says, focus on the Ark. It will be carried by the Levites. That's very important. It's dealt with by the priests and the Levites. Let me show you what happens. I told you that the Ark of God was the presence of God mm -hmm. and the power of God yes. and the provision of God. Yes, sir. Because in the ark, you had the golden pot of manna, and then you also had Aaron's rod that budded. You also had the commandments that were in the ark. Yes, sir. It was carried by the priests and the Levites. Mm -hmm. The Levites couldn't touch it because the way they carried it, they would take some wood sticks, rods, mm -hmm. They take the rods and run it through the rings on it, and they would carry it because if you touched it, you died. So it was carried by the rods. You know what you've been carried by? You've been carried by the rod. Y'all go back to Psalms 23. Thy rod and thy staff. Let me tell you the difference between a rod and a staff. I feel like teaching a little bit for a little while. The rod is always used for correction. The rod is used to bring you back into submission. The staff is used to hold you. The staff was a long stick with a curve on the end. Whenever you got into a place where you couldn't get yourself, the sheep couldn't get himself out of, the shepherd would take the uh, staff and wrap it around the sheep and pull him out of trouble. But the rod. The rod was used in a different way. The shepherd would take the rod. One way he would use the rod was whenever the sheep come through the sheep door, he would take the rod and count the sheep. He would use that to make sure he had all of his sheep. And then also he would take the rod and he would flip up the mane and wool to see if there was any disease or any uh, uh, animal or ticks or anything on the sheep. And he would move the hair back to see if there was something on you that was making you sick that made you not worthy to be in the presence of the other sheep. And then also he would take the rod and when you start getting out of line, he would tap the sheep and make him get back in line. <laughs> now the Lord takes the rod and uses it to hold the Ark of the Covenant. And he lets the Levites carry the rod. Well, let me tell you who the Levites are. Can I tell you who the Levites are? Wave your hand, Reverend Rose. The Levites were the ones from the uh, Levitical priesthood. They were the ones who was called to deliver the message of God. And he put the rod in the hands of the Levites and the priests. And what was the rod carrying? The rod was carrying the very presence of God, the power of God, and the provision of God. And he said, follow the ark of the covenant, not the priest. Don't look at the priest. Look at the ark. Israel had a struggle. Israel had a struggle that many today have a struggle with. Yeah. You've got the presence and the power of God in the acacia tree in the land of Shittim, yeah. and you done got comfortable in Shittim. Yeah. Don't get comfortable because God has provided for you <clears throat> in a land of Shittim. Yeah. 
because the acacia wood also had the ability to die and wither up. Amen. The blessings of God, wherever he blesses you, sometimes it's just temporary. Sometimes that tree will get cut down. Sometimes the Bible, God will say, it's enough. I bless you there for a season, not for a lifetime. Don't get comfortable in this land of symptoms. I've got another place for you to go. A promised land for you to go. And some of us can't make it to the promised land because we're riding on the provisions of God in a land that is not all. And some of our greatest struggles are that now you're in the city so long All right. that you got a problem with the Levites uh -huh. and the Levitical priesthood. Yeah. You know what they did, don't you? They stayed there so long that they didn't want to have church no more. How many of us gone testify All right. that the Lord has been so good to us? So good. So good. And we took his blessings for granted. Yeah. Those have been in church all my life. Can you imagine the number of people that I have personally have seen that have come down and said, Lord, I need a blessing. And the Lord has blessed them. And they walked out never to be seen again. Yes, sir. And if I've seen so many. How many do you think the Lord has seen? But you know what I love about the text? Well, the text doesn't even get into detail about how many left and walked away. How many stayed with the Moabites. Don't even get into it because you know what the Lord says? I made a promise. And I made a vow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick with what I said I was going to do. He made a promise that he's going to carry all of his believers to a land that was not promised to us. I'm going to take you to a land. <laughs> now we see here in the text that the Lord is still sticking with his plan. And I'm telling you, don't, be, don't get yourself out of whack and don't you misunderstand God. Just because you're in this land, it does not mean that you can't still follow God and get out of this land. It, he did not say because they would turn to Moabites that they could not return to me. He just said when you see the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant, don't look at anything but the Ark of the Covenant and get you out of here. Some people can't get out of this land and get out of what they're going through because you keep looking at the priest. Amen. 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 You keep looking at the one who brings the message and never focusing on the message. What's in the Ark? In the Ark is a golden pot of manna. Let me park there for a little while. Yeah, yeah. Don't you know that in the word of God, once you focus on the word of God, you will realize that he has food for you that will nourish your body more than any fast food or any five-star restaurant that it will provide for you. Because this one here doesn't cost you five stars. This one here just costs you a little blood. Right, yeah. Then he says that I also have Avon Rod that budded. This one here is the power of God. This is the one that shows that God can provide in the midst of nothing. This is the rod where he drops it and he turns into a snake. And this is the rod that he picks it up by a tail and it turns back to the rod, showing that God says that I can turn trouble and put it under your authority. Yes. I can turn it into a snake that can kill you easily. Yes. Quicker than you can ever imagine. Amen. But I can give you some power Amen. to where you can handle that trouble. Amen. I can teach you how to handle trouble. And you know how to handle trouble? You ought to trust God. Amen. He can take that trouble and you can pick it up. And you know I know he can do it, don't you? You know how I know he can do it? 
because I see what he did for you. Amen. I ain't talking about me no more. Some of y'all just as rotten as dirt. <laughs> but then he learned as you showed the preacher how to handle you. And I handle you with kid clothes. Yes, and I just grab you by the tail and you turn into a rod full of power. <laughs> because God knows how to use anybody. You, I sung the song, you might as well sing it too. He can take a nobody yes. and make him a somebody. Yes. Who can say and who can tell a story and who can save anybody? That's all he did. He took a hunk of dirt and made it more valuable than silver and gold. Amen. Amen. Since I met Jesus. Yeah. Since I know what God has done for us, you got value now. Because you carry the word of God. And you do know that the word of God has power in it, don't you? The word of God has blessings in it. Yes, the word of God has healing in it. Amen. And now I'm about out of this place called Shittim. Right. Because I've learned how to keep my eyes on the power of God and the presence of God. Amen. And notice what happened when I kept my eyes on the Ark of the Covenant. I was no longer held to a place that was not my home because it had a few blessings in it. That's why we always say you never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. Because what God blesses you with over here, you ain't taking it with him to another land. Why are you trying to take some cars, clothes, and furniture to a place that he already has prepared for you? Don't you know that the Lord has a house for you that's prepared just for you? Yeah. And I just don't like having a new house with old stuff in it. Amen. I know God's blessings were good and they were very beneficial to us down here. But I don't want these blessings down here because, let me, let me share something with you. Because the blessings he provided for me down here was really only good for me down here. Yeah. Some of the blessings that God gives me here... It is no need for me to have them where he's going to carry us to. I'm out of here now. I got to go and tell the truth about it. Ain't no use in carrying a healing with me over there. Because I only gonna, I'm only going to get sick down here. So I don't need healing in a place that he has for me. Because the Bible lets us know that we should all be saved. In the moment in the twinkling of an eye. And the Bible lets us know that when I get to this place. On the other side of the chilly Jordan. He has a place for us where the wicked will see from troubling. And the weary will be at rest. On the other side of the Jordan. There is a place that man cannot conceive. Over there, you won't have to pray for me because I'll be with the one who answers prayer. You won't have to be fed over there because there's a tree over there that's good for the healing of the nation. Why would I bring something from here over there? And look where they land. To get out of this place called Shechem. Yes, yes, yes. And have you learned yet how to get out of this place yes. called Shechem? The way you get out of it is you fasten your eyes on the power of God. Because it is the power of God that will bring man unto salvation. You focus your eyes on the provisions of God because you need him to provide for you to cross over the chilly Jordan, Amen. making it to the promised land. Yeah. And then you abide by his word and his commandments, meaning that you ought to learn how to live. Amen. You're not a murderer, so you ought not to murder anybody with your words. Amen. You ought not to kill one another with your hands. Amen. You ought not to kill one another and degrade one another with your lifestyle. Amen. You're not here just to be, respect yourself, but you need to learn how to respect others. Amen. And the way you respect others is the way you carry yourself. Amen. You ought to cover yourself. And I ain't just talking about your physical body. You ought to cover your head with the word of God. 
as my buddy would always say, you ought to sit down and let me put some fat on your head. <laughs> In other words, you need some knowledge of God so that when men come and confide in you, you ought to be able to speak the word of God that is the only word that can change lives. Worldly wisdom won't even get you out of this world. But the wisdom of God will transform lives. It will perform miracles, bring men out of impossible situations. So you ought to put your eyes on the ark of God. That's how you get out of this world. That's how you get through this world. He provided for you while you sit there. And he provided for you while you travel on. And if God is that good to you, what's wrong with you saying thank you? What's wrong with staying with you? I have to throw this little part out to notice that the children that made it over were those that came from the offsprings of those that didn't make it through. And that's why you ought not to celebrate in the place of God your ancestors. It was God who kept them. And it was God that brought you through. They couldn't help themselves. But God did it for you. So don't ever replace them with God. He's God and he's God alone. And I'm telling you Third Avenue, I know men will say that you that's wrong and bad teaching. That's because they don't have the faith of God in them. I'd rather recognize the God who created me than recognize the ancestors who made me. I'm serving the creator, not the creation. God dealt with them the way he dealt with them, and he dealt with every man the way he chooses to deal with them. But I still recognize him as the supreme deity of the world. There is none above him, there's none beside him, and there really is none beneath him. He is God, and he's God all by himself. God bless you. Thank God for letting the Holy Spirit use you, Pastor. Amen. We are so grateful for the message. True enough, our heart has been blessed. But maybe there's one on today that would like to give their life over to Christ. Maybe there's one rededicate. Another may be in a vaccinated condition, but you have decided to rededicate your life to Him. And also, maybe there's one that's in the need of prayer. Maybe there's one also that's looking for a church home. And God is saying, this is where I want you to be. This is where I will have you to be. If so, the day of, the door of the church is now open. Will there be one? Why don't you come? Will there be one?
that all is well with your soul. As I hear this and said, Vince, the death angel should rise in your life. Your blood is not required in our hands. Amen. Amen. And that's because the gospel has been preached. Amen. Amen. Again, will there be any other at this time? We would like to acknowledge our visitors. Will there be one that may be visiting and care to be recognized? Will there be others that have invited? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am.